Hi, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so my name is Caroline, and um, I'm a hobbyist, you know, designer, dressmaker, uh, costumer, whatever. Um, but uh, this continues the series where I attempt to make an 1890s ball gown. So what you see right here is the um, design, and in today's video, I'm going to be going through how I made the bodice. So that's just the upper portion of the dress with the sleeves. Okay, so here I have the mock-up from part one, which was the mock-up video. And uh, what I do to make my new pattern that I'm going to use for the silk is I just take apart the mock-up version. That makes it really easy. I don't have to like re-pattern anything and all of the, um, what's it called? Edges? I oh, can't think of the word seam allowance seam allowance <laughs> all the seam allowances are already there but i you know i only do it to half of the thing because like that's redundant so also i um mark out on this where the seams are with uh, a highlighter so that i know exactly where the seam allowances are and also i know where, exactly where the darts are so when I go, you know, to my silk, I can like just map out where the darts are and it's really easy. I don't have to like fit it. <laughs> All right, so here I am just cutting out the silk. Um, the bodice is going to be this kind of coral. It's called Fay, F-A-I-L-L-E, I believe. Um, it's sort of a thicker um, silk and it has these little ribs on it. Um, I really like working with it because it's a little bit more structured. So it's like easier to make forms with, I think. Um, and it's really pretty. I really enjoy working with it. And I like the sound it makes. It's like <laughs> It's a very crisp sound. Um, and I'm able to get it uh, in the discount bin. Like usually they have like at the end of the bolt, they have like a couple yards of it. So I have many colors of this particular fabric. And this was used in the Victorian era. I've seen it on, you know, extant garments when I go to the museum. Um, so they use it in conjunction with other materials as well, which is something I really like about the Victorian era. They really mixed and match a lot of different materials. I'm not sure why they did that. Um, I guess just because they want a lot of embellishment or something. Um, but I think it looks really cool. I I'm going to look more into it. Why? But... And I modified the back piece just a little bit because I decided I didn't want like a point um, because I wanted to add this like lace detail so I changed it just a little bit and then I'm just cutting out the sleeves too and this I just did the same thing I undid the mock-up and I'm cutting out the sleeves from that now for this pattern there's an inner sleeve and the inner sleeve I used this silk taffeta um, kind of like an egg color so that's what I use for the inner sleeve here I am cutting it out and I used um, a, I think it's a cotton silk blend for the lining I got it like for two dollars a yard I wasn't sure what it was but I, I, I know for sure it's cotton but it's also feels really really nice so I feel like it's silk blend I'm not exactly sure but um, so I was lucky to get that fabric so here I am, I'm just going to um, pin the darts and, you know, just sew them with the sewing machine because I can, I'm just going to use some chalk and um, make the, the marks for the um, darts. And I'm going to um, flatline this. That's what they did in the 18th century, or 19th century. Um, they flatline these dresses, at least that's what it looks like in the, all the, the garments I've seen. And then, you know, they put the bones inside the, like, open seams. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm sewing these darts with it flatlined. Um, and, and, you know, I tried to sew down the sides so it would be kind of better. If I had a surgery, I would just surge everything, but, like, I don't, I wish I did. Um, anyway, here's the darts sewn, as you can see. So... That's one bit to go. Um, here I just have all of the pieces just in a big row sewn together. I didn't do the shoulder seam yet, but 
This is how the order they're supposed to look like. Um, so these are all the seams. And the next thing I'm going to do is just iron out all of the seams, cut open the seams, um, the uh, dart seams, um, and just iron all of these open. And then, um, All right, so now in order to do the boning, um, in a lot of Victorian things I've seen, they make these casings um, out of this ribbon. So I bought a bunch of this ribbon and I just sewed it in half to make like sort of a casing. I used one fourth inch boning and it's, I just used plastic boning. And right here, um, as you can see, I've cut, um, you know, little triangles out of the, um, what's it called? seam allowances so it'll lay flat and then I'm going to put the ribbon bones into these seams actually looking back this was this is actually a lot of work like at the time I was in such a haze to get the thing done that like I don't even remember it to be honest like <laughs> um literally I didn't do anything for like two days and then I didn't even finish it on time so whatever <laughs> it's like um hey sometimes that Okay, so here is all of my boning, um, and I, to finish off the edges of these, um, channels, or seam allowances, it, it looks like in pictures that they, um, you know, sewed them down, but honestly, I was, like, so just out of it at that point, but I was like, I'm just gonna use, you know, shearing, I think, shearing, pinking, I don't know, what, what do you call these scissors, pinking scissors, um, just to like pink the edges so they don't like fray um and that seemed to work pretty well so uh yeah that's what i did um so here i am i'm just putting um you know i cut all the boning to the um if you read the pat patterns fashion book it specifies what you know how high or low the boning is supposed to go so i went by that and i uh, and where the boning is supposed to go so the only thing I did to modify this dress is I put in a front closure instead of a back closure because I didn't, um, I wanted to take off the dress from the front. So I'm going to get more of that later, but, um, now I'm just filling the boning channels and I'm just, um, uh, hand stitching them down using, uh, I can't remember the name of the, uh, stitch. Gosh, I'm like really uh, drawing a blank to words right now. Oh, this is what happens when you work at night nights. But um, uh, hopefully we'll show you in this thing. <laughs> but basically, I hand stitched it, you know, down into the um, boning channels, and um, that's how we did it. All right, so I have all like the bones done except for the front closure. And I'm just folding the fabric over. I added, I added a little more, you know, for the allowance. And I'm just folding it over and I'm making, you know, I'm hand stitching a boning channel right here. I remember the stitch, whip stitch. I'm whip stitching it. <laughs> So you can see in the final product of that, uh, it looks nice, the front. Okay, so the bones of the thing are basically done. And now what I'll have to do is uh, try it on and just uh, do that shoulder seam. So I want to make sure it's uh, good enough. How I did this seam was I tried it on, I, you know, marked off how it was supposed to be, and I'm now doing French seams. Now, how you do a French seam is this. 
right side to right side you stitch then you cut off very close to the seam i'm doing it for both sides you uh, cut off very close to the seam and then you turn that inside out and you stitch down encasing that seam inside so the uh, seam is nice and finished so that's what I did to get rid of that problem see how, how the seam inside is now finished and there's the outside seam it looks really nice this is a really nice technique to use and it's pretty easy once you you know get the hang of it so I would really uh, encourage you guys to try it um, at first it seemed intimidating but now it's like so much easier to just do that honestly so here I've just um, I'm just finishing off the edges of the bodice that's the, around the neck um, and I'm just folded down um, a couple times and pinned it that's all so now I'm just whip stitching the whole thing you're really not even gonna see this because I kind of was being like a little bit of an imperfectionist during this because it's like all right honestly I could have got it done but like and this is like a lesson to me to myself like I could have got it done but like I was like no I needed to perfectly line up and it's like yeah it's fine and dandy but honestly I was new and I knew I was covering it up with lace anyway so it wouldn't be that big of a deal but I was like no it has to be perfect no 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 and, and it's like I really just cheated myself like I could have gone to the thing but you know, whatever. Next time, I'm not going to be so freaking critical. And I suggest you guys do the same. I mean, it's like, I can't all make a perfect, you know, Victorian gown. <laughs> so. Okay, so here I am adding the first of the hidden closures. Um, this is just going to be a preliminary closure. And what I'm using is some hook and eye um it's basically hook and eye tape and you can get this from the fabric store i got it i get it from the fabric store and it's just a huge line of just hook and eyes and it's all in a row and like a piece of tape so all i have to do is just whip stitch it i don't have to do every individual hook and eye i mean this saves me so much time so um i would uh, really recommend doing this way if you have to do you know some sort of long hook and eye thing because it really helps so here I'm just whip stitching it on both sides and make sure that it lines up and everything like that so okay the next thing I did was I just cut off like the ends I wanted it to be a different kind of I needed the ends uh, some of the like um, it wasn't even you know what I mean so I just wanted to trim it make it all the you know same like even on both sides and that's what I'm doing here so then I can later on add a um, bias tape um, so I can, you know, finish that edge. Okay, one more thing before, I just added a stitch to just finish off the edge of the bodice so nothing is falling out or anything like that. Okay, here I am with the sleeves. Um, first, what I'm going to do is I have the uh, it's called the upper sleeve and in the patterns of fashion 2 book they have um, marked out where you're supposed to gather it and um, where you're supposed to not so all I did was go to the sewing machine and just make some really big stitches and then I can just pull on the thread and make the gathers where it says in the patterns of fashion book so that's what I did it was three sides of it that was um, like this and this is the first time i've seen this kind of sleeve um that i've attempted to make it's like one side is a poof and then i'm going to sew it down to the other side so it's like extra poofy i guess i'm not really sure but it looks cool in the end so all right so then i have my you know gathered sleeve that all the parts to be gathered now here is the inner sleeve, so I'm going to um, just sew that. So I'm going to um, just sew the sides of the inner sleeves at this point. <laughs> um, next, how I do the sleeve is I want to attach the inner sleeve to the outer sleeve. And if you see in the patterns of fashion book too, they have it's 
basically looks like almost one of those bell sleeves um so i have to make sure like that the right side of the inner sleeve is showing when i put my sleeve it's like it's like a lining but so what i do first is i stitch the um, bottom of the sleeve first um so that's what i'm doing and then i'm gonna turn it inside out and then stitch the top Here I come back from the sewing machine and I'm just gonna turn it inside out. I hope this makes sense, but um it in and look at the diagram of the patterns of fashion book because that will show you like to make sure you're having the right and left sleeve because they are different. So here I'm just turning it inside out and you see how it looks. And then it's gonna be like you're not really gonna see the white part. It's gonna like fold under to make a puff. You see? Now I have to finish it off um I have to put, attach the top part of the sleeve to the top part of uh, the other sleeve. So this is in the diagram, you're supposed to gather some portion and stuff. So I just do that by um, going to the sewing machine and sewing all around. And um, now I have the uh, inner sleeve and outer sleeve. So now it's just one sleeve. So yeah, it looks nice. It's nice and puffy. I think the fabric really helps in that too. Okay, so I wanted an extra pizzazz to this and I had this um, pretty like shiny fabric. So um, I wanted like a flouncy thing on the top. So I just had these strips of fabric and I wanted to hit at a certain area so I measured it out. And then I, I'm just pleating it. I'm hemming it first and then I'm pleating it and adding it to the top of the sleeve to make for like an extra you know, oomph for the uh, dress. And I just went to the sewing machine and added it, so. So this is just gonna look like an extra um, decoration on the top of the sleeve. And then to make sure it wasn't flying all over the place, I just attached it to a poof part of the sleeve with just a few stitches. So yeah, now I have this extra like bit of shine. Cause like I said in the Victorian uh, period, they really like to mix and match fabric. Okay, so now I have the sleeve. I attached it using the sewing machine to the bodice. So now I have the sleeve with the bodice. You can see the extra like flouncy bit and everything. It looks really poofy, it looks really Victorian. I mean, really I could just have gone out like this, probably, but you know, I wanted to be like super, super extra. So you can see what it's gonna look like with the uh, lace over top. I wanted that kind of like effect of like a little bit of an underneath difference than just the coral. So that's what it's gonna look like at the end, so. Now I wanted to add the hidden closure and I wanted to, at first I was going to do like these ties and stuff, but I just didn't think it like went with the design. So I ended up deciding on um, like a sort of pleat um, pattern design. You'll see in a second. And here I am just um, mapping out where I want that to be. I did this on the mannequin. This mannequin is set up to my measurements so I could just have a real shape of what it's going to be. So here I am just mapping that out because I'm going I'm, I'm to take this back to the uh, ironing board and I'm going to um, make like a little front panel that's going to have hidden closure um, for this. Okay, so here I am with... Um, this is taffeta. I use. Um, I use three different types of taffeta, and I'm just sewing the smaller pieces that I have together, um, using French seams first, and um, then I'm going to pleat it.
All right, so here I am just pleading it. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, I was watching The Untouchables during this thing. I mean, I think it was really highly exaggerated, like how great the uh, guy was in The Untouchables. Like, anyway, um, that's besides the point, but um. And then once I had the um, pleading done with the um, iron that I wanted, like the placement that I wanted, I'm just hand stitching it. So at the front you can't really see the stitches. Um, so from the back I'm stitching it um, so all of the pleats remain nice and down but you can't see any stitches. So, um, and then it's not perfect, like it's not, you know, um, perfectly uh, even on both sides, you really are looking at it, you know, you're staring at it, but like I said, people aren't really going to be looking that much. It's like a problem that you look on your face, like, you know, oh my gosh, this pimple, you know, oh, everyone's looking at it. They're really just looking at, you know, the over, your overall face. They're not, they don't care. So, you know, if the overall thing looks pretty good, then people are not really, like, it's not really something to worry too much about. But of course I did, and I made it so I couldn't even go to the ball thing. So, <laughs> um, so I, to make the hidden closure, I stitched down and sewn everything. See how I'm missing that brown part? And what I'm going to do is it's going to open up. I have the other brown part stitched, and then it's going to um, open with that, and then like the brown part is going to be stitched to the front. I don't know if that makes sense, but. So I have two separate, um, here you can see it. I have two separate pleated, you know, areas. So to make um, the hidden closure. Um, so that is what it's about gonna look like. Um, so once I kind of figured out how long I really wanted it to be, I, I marked that off with some chalk and then um, I am finishing it with some brown bias tape. Okay, in order to keep the pleats in place, I just uh, went to the sewing machine and, and stitched them down, and then I'm adding the bias tape, basically. Um, here, yeah, I'm just adding the bias tape. Then I um, added these buttons for just a, another effect. And once I did that, I put in the um, closures, which is just use these small snaps. Um, and I just put them strategically um, so it would close the way I wanted it to. Okay, so um, now I have it pinned, and uh, I have my you know closure snaps on and everything like that. And now what I'm going to do is hand stitch um, these almost like a flap onto the bodice. And I and I did this not laying down because I wanted to have it to have the shape of like the curve of the actual bodice. So I'm. Uh, hand sewing it out with whip stitches and I did the same thing for the other side too um, so it can open with a nice uh, hidden closure okay so here you can see the uh, I will have the hidden closure so you can guys see Here's me doing the snaps, like, in the front, and then you'll see me, um, closing it with the hidden, um, closure, which actually looks really cool. Oh, and another thing, I added bias tape to the bottom of this, um, alright, but, yeah, bias tape to the, to the bottom of the bodice to finish off the, the bodice, and I thought it would match the, um, front part. So here I'm closing it so you can see it closes nicely like 
and you can't even tell that there's like a hidden closure there so that's pretty cool now it's time to add the lace and you know what I did with this I just draped this and pleated it um, I wanted it to have like you can see it pleated in the back like this um, and then I did the same thing on the other side um, for the same effect and in the middle I just cut it um, and I'm going to just add a, a brooch there to kind of close it off because I think that's the best option because I want to be able to open it for the um, hidden closure. Here you can see I'm just um, sewing down these pleats, just hand sewing down these pleats. I didn't, I didn't use that much like hand sewing for it. Um, yeah, I just pleated it. So. And I put some other stitches in strategic places so it would lay, you know, draped in a certain way. Um, and like a few like under the armpit and, and such so it would sort of have that this look to it. Um, yeah, here I am, I just cut off both of the big bunches on both sides of the um, bodice and I left this part open and I'm going to just put a brooch there so I can actually open it when I wear it because otherwise I won't be able to. So there you can see the bodice is finished. I just didn't need to get a you know fancy brooch for it. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's uh, the bodice so far. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna move on to the skirt. And I was thinking about using these little flowers for like the pin, but um, in the next uh, video is the skirt. It looks pretty cool um so stay tuned for that video and then where i complete that's where i'm going to complete the dress when i finish the skirt so um yeah okay guys thank you so much for watching um this is just me showing you the hidden closure but um please stay tuned for the next video and um if you enjoyed this in any way please subscribe and consider supporting me on my Patreon. And thank you to all the new subscribers. I can't believe you passed, uh, surpassed the thousand. That's amazing. Um, I'm really honestly shocked. And um, just thank you so much for all your guys' support. It really means so much to me because I work really hard on these dresses and videos. So I hope they help you guys out. Thank you.